Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. What we got? Teslin Figaro is here. Oh, and listen, we, that was that what that that information was not correct. What you just said? No, it was the finals. That yeah. was that. No, the playoff the viewership playoffs. was That's up. What I meant. The NBA, playoffs. NBA finals ratings were down from 2022, but playoff viewership was up. That's right. Yes. All right. Well, let's start off with Donald Trump. And today is Donald Trump's birthday. Yes, absolutely. They were singing uh, happy birthday yesterday to Donald Trump uh, in the Cuban restaurant. Uh, yesterday, Donald Trump became the first former president to face a judge on federal charges as he pleaded not guilty in a Miami courtroom to dozens of felony counts accusing him of hoarding classified documents and refusing government demands to give them back. Now, inside the courtroom, he sat silently, visibly upset with his arms crossed as a lawyer entered a not guilty plea on his behalf in a brief arraignment that ended without him having to surrender his passport or otherwise restrict his travel. Until last week, no, form, no former president has been charged by the Justice Department, let alone accused of mishandling top secret information. Mm, so what's next for the case? So what's next? A quick overview. Up next, they'll start the discovery process. Now, guys, that is where both parties are ordered to turn over any evidence to each other uh, with Trump's legal team. Uh, they also will file motions and that the type of motions they may may file. This is not guaranteed, but, you know, ask the case to be dismissed, exclude certain evidence from being presented at trial and anything else they can think of. Uh, you know, that is what they do during the motion process. And then just a quick note uh, for everyone to understand that the Federal Speedy Trial Act says that the government must bring a case to trial within 70 days of the indictment uh, that deadline could also be extended and then with all of that going on let's not forget he still has the new york charges of falsifying business records he still has to handle that uh, that trial is expected to begin early 2024 uh, the case in georgia is also expected to uh, happen this summer as well and he's doing all of this while still running for the republican nomination and there was zero smoke yesterday in florida yeah how many people were no there? Smoke. Well, i mean it didn't seem like it was a lot of people and, mm. and it was zero smoke and i think more folks are realizing uh this isn't something to fight over because trump is dead wrong and when Trump stands up there and Trump says things like, you know, they're coming after me because they really want to come after you. I think those people are like, no, they're actually just coming after you, buddy. Yeah, it was no smoke. I, I knew you wanted to make sure, you know, we, we talked about that as well. You had a, you know, some folks out there. I saw a guy that was running. Uh, he was dressed in a in jail, a jail costume. Hey, did he try uh, to jump in front of the car or something? Yeah, he tried to jump in front of the car. And so uh, now that they were saying he was um, an anti-Trump uh, person saying uh, lock him up. I didn't see that. But that's, you know, with the comment caucus, what I call them on social media. That's what they mm. said. But so you had a couple of things. But other than that, yeah, it was absolutely no smoke. It looks like the era of crashing out uh, for Donald Trump may perhaps be over. Yeah, that's what I said. I think, uh, you know, the January 6th, that was more of, a, of, of an exception than, than, than it was a rule. Plus, the stakes were way higher. You know what I mean? Like that was a presidential election that some people thought was stolen from them. They bought into that that lie. You know what I mean? So it was it's easier to rile them up, but then riling them up just because you personally effed up and you personally did effed up things, and now you got to deal with the consequences of it. I don't think nobody crashing out for you because of that. All right. Well, that is front page news. Now get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. 800-585-1051. Tez, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's time for some front page news. What up, Tez? What's going on, DJ NV Charlemagne the God? How you yo, feeling? Yo. I'm feeling really good. All right. Thank you for asking. Charlemagne never asks how I'm feeling, so thank you. It's your hush, hush Tez. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> Let's get right into front page news. Now, let's talk about the transgender activist that is no longer welcome at the White House. What? Yes, transgender woman Rose Montoya what? is no longer welcome at the White House events after posting on social media a video of herself and two others going topless at Saturday's Pride Month celebration on South Lawn. Now, White House Press Secretary Corrine Jean-Pierre said that the be behavior was simply unacceptable and it is unfair to the hundreds of attendees who are there to celebrate with their families. She went on to say that individuals in the video certainly will not be invited to future events and that bare-chested display was 
not a normal thing that has happened under this administration. Now, in response, Montoya defended the post by saying that going topless in Washington, D.C. is legal and Montoya supports freeing the nipple movement and said that a man would not have faced similar pushback and that trans masculine people were showing off their top surgery scars and living in joy and Montoya wanted to join them. I didn't I didn't know liberals uh, drew the line at anything. I had no idea. This they drew the line on this one. And what kind of bothered me about this is uh another video was posted last night where Montoya was saying, you know, conservatives were coming after her. And although that is true, you know, coming after her for different reasons, I just want to point out that the White House press secretary uh is a proud member, you know, of L LGBT community. And she also, you know, said that that was unacceptable. So I think across the board, this is probably where liberal and conservatives just think it just might be unacceptable to pop your titties out, you know, at the White House. Yeah, and by the way, it don't have nothing to do with uh, you know, that 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 person being trans or I guess, you know, them at the White House not being down with the free to nipple movement. If this is the White House, if I ask right. you to keep your damn shirt on, keep your shirt on. If I ask you to keep right. your shoes on, keep your shoes on. Get you walk right. in a gas station and say no shirt, no shoes, no service. Same thing right. at the White House, I guess. I mean, it's the same thing. You remember a long time ago, people were mad at Meek Mill because of the way he walked into the president's office over in Africa. Yeah. I think that's the same thing. People, you know, they want a certain way of respect and, and a certain dress code when you walk into the White House. I mean, if it was a pool party, I think people have a little different feeling. But the fact that it was a uh, uh, whatever celebration it was, uh, yeah, no, you, I can't go there and take my shirt off. Okay, yeah, I? I agree with the right. White House on this one. Plus, you know, Joe Biden, eighty nine years old. You want to keep his blood circulating, but you don't want him to have a heart attack. You know what <laughs> what <I'm saying>? Right. <laughs> yeah. and, and just for clarity, uh, she was not in the White House. It was outside on the South Lawn, and the way she mashed the video up, it was like one. Um, you know, showing her with Biden, and then after that, you know, showing her titties. So the way that it was put out on TikTok. You know, it would it was like all together, and that's what they find disrespectful. So, mm. okay. so on the line or in the White House, just keep your shirt on, shit. All right. Now we got to talk about this uh, uh, this drug that's going to help marijuana addiction. Yes, did you guys know people are addicted to marijuana? Uh, a marijuana use, a marijuana use in the United States reaches record highs, especially among young adults. Experts say this is a growing need to address its potential for addiction. An experimental pill, the first in new class of drugs, have shown promise in treating cannabis use disorder. The drug is known as AEF-0117, and it was found to reduce the perceived good effects of cannabis by up, up to 38%. Of course, weed is addictive. That's why we do it. <laughs> but what is <laughs> what is cannabis use disorder? Okay. Cannabis use disorder is diagnosed as the inability to stop using marijuana, even when it causes significant disruptions to daily life, such as interfering with relationships or work. Uh, and so this is according to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. They say an estimated 14 million Americans struggle uh, with cannabis use disorder. So I thought this was interesting. My favorite thing to report is studies and, you know, exper experiments that are happening. And, you know, we've uh, we obviously we agree that uh, we should be legalized. But I wanted to get you guys feedback on the addiction and how some people just literally wake up, you know, smoking weed, going to bed, smoking weed and how it's affected a lot of their relationships. Well, the thing with weed is uh, folks don't want to stop because folks do enjoy it. And, you know, folks don't look at weed as something that's uh that's harmful, you Correct. know, but I guess you don't realize you're addicted to it until you have to stop. Like if you're on probation or something and you know, you know, you got, you got to get, you know, you got to get piss test, but you just can't find, you can't stop. You can't control yourself. That's yeah. when you know, I guess you got this cannabis use disorder. Thing. That's, I'm going to let y'all know. Y'all been using all types of words this morning that we're not supposed to be using, but all right, let's well, keep rocking. You, you can't say piss test? No. Yes, you can. No, I thought I piss is on the list. off or pissed on. But you still can't use piss. I don't I, think I, you, you can can't say that for a, so is a pee test. Yes. And nobody says that. Nobody said pee test. You can right. say piss test. All right. And I use some words too, my bad. Test, test to the tit and shit. So, hey, let's you do it. Oh, tit. really? Okay. <laughs> I didn't know you couldn't say tit. Oh my gosh, I could tell who does not go through the uh, the the program where you supposed to, where you could uh, learn the words that you're not supposed to be using on radio. Hey man, I ain't got time. He was straight DJ MV. <laughs> All right, well that is your front page news. This is gonna be a long day. I could tell already. When we come back, hey, and make sure you subscribe to the Straight Shot No Chaser podcast hosted by Tesla and Figaro on the Black Effect iHeart Radio podcast network, and follow Tesla and Figaro at Tesla and Figaro on all platforms. All right. Mm -hmm. Tusi will be joining us when we come back, so don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.